Hello all, welcome to my channel. Welcome on this Thursday morning, it's 10.59 a.m. my time. Y'all come on in. If you subscribe me and you click that bell, you shouldn't miss when I go live. So y'all make sure y'all click that bell if you subscribe to my channel and make sure you hit the like button when you come in. Today's day's um, brand video, we're talking about the grammar and the proper way of not so common rules of the English language. It's this book right here. I've been taking notes, highlighting notes in here, and basically reading through it and studying it. A lot of it I don't understand still. That's one of my weaknesses as a writer. Speaking the proper English, getting the proper capitalization, punctuation, grammar, etc., etc. And we're going to flip on over. For instance, the placing of certain punctuation marks inside or outside quotation marks is a matter of grammar. Yes, I know that someone will insist that it is wrong to write. I want to go home. Yes, it is wrong, but the error lies in the realm of the print code. The code of etiquette we all use when we print or write something. The sentence, I want to go home, is grammatically, grammatically correct. It is wrong or inappropriate only insofar as we agree that the period is always placed inside the quotation marks, not outside of it. And I'd make get mixed up. I'd put the comma and the period sometimes in the wrong spot. I'm guilty of that. I think as writers, if you're writers out there, we're all guilty of that. So we have to watch how we write things. Make sure it's correct. And figure out how to correct it. I've heard people insist that the sentence... I ain't done yet. You all hear me say the word ain't a lot just in my ordinary English. I apologize. I'm trying to learn the correct ways from that. And like I said, I get stuck on it. I have to have help. I don't have no support in my writing, really. Nobody on my family side. I'm happy to get books and study it my own self or take. That's why I take free courses. The free courses I take helps me. I've done completed two free courses now. I'll be on the third one soon. Um, I heard people insist that sentence I ain't done yet is, is grammatically incorrect. The word may be incorrect in certain situations, but whatever that situation might be, the sentence is not grammatically incorrect. Of course, in a formal or even semi-formal situation. Ain't is regarded as inappropriate language. I use that word ain't a lot. Think of it as being similar to going to church, dressed in a tank top, something that would usually be regarded as a violation of the dress code for that time and place. Whoever come in, just took a peek, make sure you come back. Make sure you hit the like button when you come in. Hello, Unboxing Review. How you doing today? Today, this brand is talking about, I don't know if you all heard the book called Dr. Grammar's Rights and Wrongs. It's a supremely authoritative guide to the common, not so common rules of the English language. And as writers, we need to know the proper way to speak, how to write. That's some of my weakness. I'm having a pretty good morning so far. It's been pretty good. My whole week's been pretty good. Mondays ain't usually my favorite days, but it still turned out okay. What you been up, been up to today so far this morning? Have you been creating ideas on your channel? And it's like, I will not use ain't in a formal writing or speaking. I might even raise some eyebrows using 
um, along in the sentence. I took some notes. Well, I highlighted some notes in the book of what I've been studying. I've been studying since last night and part of this morning, figuring out where I'm going to start presentation on my channel. And I figured this is a good subject. We all at some point, even, even if you made straight A's in English or you took a course in college, we still always have that certain point to where we'll forget something. We put the wrong word that should be the correct grammar or correct saying in there. And we all just have to work with it. And that's what this book's teaching us. <clears throat> in the sentence, I ain't done yet. Nevertheless, I ain't done yet is grammatically correct. Grammar is concerned with the form and structure of words and their relationships. In phrases, in clauses, and sentences. The difference between the sentence, John loses Mary and Mary loses John, is a matter of grammar. The entire meaning changes with the changing of word, order in the sentences. Word order is one of the most significant concerns of grammar when we use the word grammar in its true sense. In terms of word order, most Native speakers of English would not write Eugene the ball through Ellis, even without knowing the names, the parts of the language. The native speaker would put the words in their usual order and write Eugene through Ellis's, Ellis the ball. That's the correct way to write it. It gives you examples with this. In some languages, word order is not all that important. Let me go back to the English Latin roots to illustrate this. Because most of our traditional rules in English come from Latin. The word order in Latin is as important. The sentence John loves Mary written in Latin is Jones, Maram, Amat. The verb as usual coming at the end of the sentence. If you're showing action with something, you're using a verb. Or you're using a certain word that has a noun in it. Sometimes that gives you clues on what the correct way to write that sentence would be. Um, the word order is the same, but the meaning changes. How? Notice the ending on the Latin for John and Mary. Maria. Miriam. And Joanne's. Joanthem. These endings called inflections tell the reader which is the subject and which is the object of the verb. It's had many more inflections than it has now. With regard to nouns, the basic inflections involve the singular and the plural like chair versus chairs. Hero, it changes, slash heroes, it's got the, the O-E-S. It's no longer singular, it changes to plural because it has the OES on the end. You have country and then countries with the ES on the end instead of the Y, it changes. You look how it changes. You got shelf versus shelves, S H E L V S. It goes from singular and once again to plural, if you understand how that goes. With pronouns, it is number and case subject of a verb, object of a verb or preposition or proposition or possession. I versus we, he or she, they. Number, I, me, I, my, she, her, case. It's like it changes. And here's some examples. Give the keys to her. My father is visiting from Kansas City. It would be ungrammatical to write, give, give the keys to she. It don't make sense, does it? Me, father, is visiting from Kansas City. But as I wrote earlier, most native speakers of English would not make these errors. Most people are simply better Grammarans, when the term is correctly understood, then they think. 
Without being consciously aware of it, people pick up the generally accepted patterns for word order and inflection that are a part of our collective grammar. Grammar also deals with the form of words, even though the dictionary meanings are, this is where I used to get confused because it's like all the same in the dictionary. But like when you in college or you buy these books that helps us as writers, it shows, it changes. There's a certain word that changes over. So you have to look out for that. You can kind of use both things, but you want to make sure you get the correct answer on it, the correct grammar with that. The dictionary meanings are re relatedly or even exactly the same. Bill's friendly song is grammatically different from Bill's friend sang. Song, sang. See how it switches around between the words? I'm learning this because sometimes I'll put the wrong word that's meaning something total different. That's the part in my English that I'm having to work on. Good morning, David. How's your Thursday coming along? He's the one that actually... And his brother sent me a package on things that helps me with my writing, my English, and my grammar. And this is the one I've been studying in, highlighting my notes. I've been working on it since not, uh, last night. And I am uh, so far on page 19. I stopped it on page 19. That's where I stopped at. But I took notes to where I was wanting to study to go on my live stream. Make sure you hit that like button, friend. And it's just, it's amazing so much stuff you can learn with this. And I'm like, I took English in school. I took a writing course, you know, but as you get older, some things you don't remember. Your mind is not as sharp as it was when you was once 20 years old. That's why I constantly try to ed educate myself and study in books that's got to do with writing or English or grammar. It's not just for pleasure, even though I'm a bookworm. I also love to read. I get, I get, um, when I read for pleasure for certain books or new authors that I'm not familiar with, I get my ideas on my characters, um, how to structure my story through those books or how to come up with better ideas for titles in another story. But I also like to read for pleasure, as I said. That builds you better as a writer when you actually stay in the reading. Grammar also deals with the form of words, even though, which I said that about the dictionary, meaning the same thing. Um, like Bill's friendly song is grammatically different from Bill's friend sang. But the dictionary meanings of those three words are basically still the same from the dictionary. That threw me off a little bit on that. Because the difference in the form of the words adverb versus noun. In a friendly friend and noun versus verb in song slash sang. We have two different grammatical structures and two totally different meanings. That's where it throws me off. I'll get the word right, but when I'm writing something, it's throwing off the meaning in my story because it's talking about a whole total different meaning. I have to make sure I get the correct grammar and meaning before I add on to that story. Oh, good. Congrats. You have just uploaded a video. I have to check it out when I get done. Congrats to you, Unbox. That's awesome. Finally, if we take into account the spoken variety of English, and there are those who argue that spoken English takes precedence over written English, we have an additional structural device that lies within the purview of grammar. In spoken English, we might call it the intonation or stress in See, I highlight certain things I've been studying that what I need working on, I highlight it down. That helps me. In written English, it is called juncture and is signaled through 
punctuation. Oh boy. The punctuation. Do I mess up and make errors on that all the time? That's what they tell you. Go back and proofread your work. Look it over before you go and publish it. You have to edit it, proofread it over 10, 20, sometimes 100 times. And that's what the other people do. When you got viewers and people um, or someone looking over your work, your rough draft or your piece, they're constantly going back, looking over it. They're marking the errors. And they make note on certain things that you're doing good, but you need to still work on. I get a lot of errors on that. But I'm working on it. I will get better. Because of these books, they're going to help me get my proper English right. Maybe I won't use the spam so much sometimes. That falls in through not using the proper English, the language. So maybe that'll help me with that as well. Here's an example. Alex, the barber, canceled my appointment. Alex, comma, the barber, canceled my appointment. These two sentences are gram grammatically identical. The dictionary meanings of the words are the same. The order of the words is the same as are the inflections and the forms of it. They're the same. They're written the same way. But yet the placement of just one comma signals an entirely different meaning because it had the comma. It was the proper um, punctuation. Where the first one, Alex the Barber canceled my appointment, did not have the proper punctuation or comma into it. Hello to THC. How's it going there? Welcome to my live stream. We're talking about the grammar and the pro proper English language. This book right here. And if you're a writer or if you write, you know that there's everybody has a weakness in some point in their writing. And this is going to help me grow more as a writer and to speak better English. Um, how you doing today, THC? Make sure y'all hit the like button when you come in. I greatly appreciate it. And I hope your Thursday is going great for you as my whole week's went well for me so far, including today. Yet the placement of just, like I said, one comma signals an entirely different meaning. In speaking, you would probably intronate or stress the word like Alex and probably pause after saying his name. In writing, you indicate that you are speaking directly to Alex by placing a comma after the name. Sometimes I put my commas in the wrong places, but I'll get better with that. I will practice, practice to say always makes perfect. The more you practice, the more you write your own example sentences and try to figure out where the capitalization, the punctuation goes, the better of a writer you'll become. That's for all of us in general. I believe that. The difference in the two sentences has been made obvious by something so small as a single comma. In the first sentence, the barber's name is Alex, and you are stating that he canceled your appointment. In the second, you are addressing a person named Alex and stating that a barber who is nameless in your sentence canceled your appointment. You see the difference there? And a very important vehicle for conveying accurate meaning in your writing. In the years that Dr. Grammar has been operating the right line in Oakton Community College, I've had very few calls. With, I've had very few calls with reference to grammar of this nature. Occasionally, I'll get something of the is it John and me that went to the ball game or John and I went? the variety, or give a copy of the report to Sarah and I. But the inquirers in these cases, I believe, are not, are not ignorant of grammar. They are simply overcompensating. They are confused, like I get confused a lot. <laughs> and the confusion probably stems from the old, 
the mandates about it is me or and is I. <clears throat> Sometimes I use I too much. Because I know I to me is an important word. And sometimes I have eyes a lot. I have to go back and switch it around and replace it with another word instead of so many eyes in my sentences. I'm glad you're doing good. That's excellent. You have a smile on your face this morning. You all know I'm. I try to be smiling joy joy on my channel. Also inspiring. The most thing we can do is believe in ourselves. If we believe that we can do something, we can do it. If we work hard, we, we will achieve our goals and our dreams. But it, some of the questions was left before I'd get on to that answer more pressing questions let me leave you with this little scenario the telephone rings good afternoon oakland community college the right line may i help you uh yes is this the grammar hotline are you dr grammar yes it is and yes i am i uh i um he pauses i have a question okay how may I help you? My wife tells me that there's a difference between shall and will. Is that so? I seem to remember something about that. But neither one of us can remember the rule. Is there a difference? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Or I should say there was a difference. It still exists. I suppose, but current usage doesn't demand it. Does it demand the distinct? The, let me get this word right. I get tongue tied, but I'll get it. The distinct distinction most people use will, in preference to shall, to say or write, I shall go, sounds pretentious or affected today, especially in informal usage. Oh, so it's okay to use will no matter what? Well, I'm not certain about the no matter what part, but you would be grammatically, grammatically correct today to use will in most statements where you, where you would also consider using shall. However, in questions involving I or use, you should use shall, as in shall I call you tomorrow. Or shall we go? Meaning, are you ready to go? You got a past tense. You got a future present tense. Oh, I see. A pause. But you said there is or was a distinction. Could you tell me about it? Certainly. It's somewhat of a complicated mess. But here it goes. With the first person, shall indicates the future. As I said, I've been doing my studying, show and tell, because I got that before I even started reading it. Some things I might have forgot, but it comes to me as I go back and review it. I shall go shopping, meaning that later today or tomorrow or whenever. I am going to go shopping. With the second and third person, shall means determination. You shall do it, or he shall not come here. Are you with me so far? Am I making this clear? Fine so far. I think I've got it. Good. But here's the catch with will. With the first person, will means determination, as in I will do it, meaning I am determined to do it. You will succeed to do it. Hmm. There is a difference in that. Wow. The question of the time is not an issue, but with the second and the third person, will means a simple future. They will leave tomorrow, or you will ask her tomorrow. As you can see, it is fairly a distinction, and 
Its usage allows you to use will with any person to indicate the future. Of course, I don't mean to tell you not to use shall or not to make that extension. extension. If you want to, I still like to do so. Well, let me ask you just one more question. All right. You mentioned all that about persons. The person determines the difference in the meaning between shall and will, right? Right. Okay. But I'm just a bit confused. Pause. When do you start counting? Counting? Pause. Yeah. Do you do it every day uh, or at a given time or in a particular situation? Silence at my end at this time. Suddenly the vertical light bulb goes on over in my head. I covered the mouthpiece. I mean, how does a person know if he is okay, sir? Let me backtrack just a bit. The grammatical concept of first, second, or third has nothing to do with. One of my favorite quotations, I use it all the time, is from Oliver Wendell Holmes, who gets my vote as the greatest jurist in American history. He said, a word is the skin of a living thought. Only when words are used properly and the grammar is correct can you be certain that you are communicating your real message to your readers. That made sense. The Aztecs were right. He who speaks well gets to speak with the gods. Dr. Grammar likes to think that those who write well just might be able to write to the gods. That expression on there. <clears throat> and these was just some notes and things I studied last night with it. Trying to get that proper comma, that proper word, use it for phrase. Sometimes I'm writing something that means future, but yet I put the wrong word in it. And it's like it's labeled as past tense. When it's supposed to be future, something is going to happen. You have to watch those certain words. It'll catch you. It'll throw your whole paragraph. If you're writing a song. And you use the wrong word, and it's supposed to be something from your past, but yet you're trying to mix it with your future. It can throw the readers off with it if you don't have the right meaning with those words. So I'm happy to learn that. Hello, Wayne. Good morning to you. How's your Thursday coming along? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You had that smile on your face. Show and tell. I love to hear and see happy faces come onto my channels. Nothing like it. We grow together and be connected like a YouTube family. That's that's my aim. I want us to grow, constantly inspire others, learn from each other. There might be something I don't know, and if you know it, you give me tips. It's what we're here for. Here's a question. My son, who is in the 10th grade, Tells me that his teacher says that knowing the parts of speech is not important anymore. He certainly doesn't seem to know very much about them. When I was in school, we seemed to spend a lot of time studying the parts of speech. Don't they do that anymore? Aren't the parts of speech really important? Here's Dr. Grammer's message. It sounds to me as though you and I grew up in the same era. For I too. Certainly remember endless drills require me to label the various parts of speech. The problem we now recognize with those drills is that the knowledge did not necessarily transfer to good or even correct writing. Don't you remember sometimes doing it especially well on your tests and on parts of the speech and then getting a lower grade on a theme you wrote? I know I certainly do. Yeah, I remember that quite well. What we have come to realize in recent years is that knowing the parts of speech in a specific instance might be useful information. But it's not necessarily going to make you a competitive writer. Remember, there is a major difference between being competitive and being correct. A competitive writer will, for, for the most part, be correct. 
A correct writer is not necessarily competitive or, for that matter, even interesting. The major problem with studying the parts of speech is that they have meaning only within the context of a single sentence. Somehow I missed, skipped the highlight that. That's a good major point there. Yes, indeed. If I don't take notes and highlight things, I'll be lost. Even in this book. This helps keep me on my toes. And it keeps where I don't lose my place from where I'm studying. Hope y'all are getting acquaintance with each other. Everybody comes in, make sure you hit the like button, say hello, and get acquaintance to whoever's already on my channel. And um, they can explain what this channel is about. If you miss the most portion of it, they can fill you in and get you caught back up. And here's another example. Alex has a dirty face. Period. Face is a noun telling what Alex has. It is time that you face the music. Here the same word face spelled exactly the same way is used as a verb. You got one using it in a noun expression and you got one using it in a verb which verb shows action. Noun are person, place, and thing. With the noun, he's it's telling about a person's face. You can see from this example that it's wrong to say categorically that face is only a noun or that it is only a verb. Face functions as a noun or a verb depending on the specific sentence. When you say that any given word is a particular part of a speech, you're only describing how it functions in a particular sentence. Not how, how it will always function in the future. And then the question goes, I, I still have a problem shifting between nouns and pronouns, especially knowing which pronouns to use. Do you have a solution? Dr. Grammar. First, let's review the function that a noun fulfills a sentence. A noun is a word that names a person place or thing, an idea or an action. When you use it to name a specific person, place or thing, you always capitalize it. If it's names, a general group or a class or an idea or an action, you do not capitalize it unless it is the first word in the sentence. Sometimes I got confused on that. <laughs> That makes a lot of sense now. Thanks for these books. This is helping me so much. And I hope it will help you all to y'all's English. And certain weaknesses, you might be in past this point, might be um, acing it. It might be certain other portions in this book that you're stuck with. But we'll get to it. We're taking it one day, step, section at a time. And we study it together. I look at us discussing. If you got any questions so far, you can feel free to ask me. If I even pronounce a word that I'm reading out loud and you want to correct that word, please correct me on my words. Because I, I, at times I, I'll pronounce a word wrong. If I'm not familiar with it or the meaning of that word, I'm going to say it wrong. So I don't mind any tips. I'm here to help you, inspire you, and I would want the same treatment. From you all. I think that's fair. I think that's how we grow and how we can continue to connect and grow by doing that. And it's amazing all the stuff that you learn. A person, you learn a subject, an object, the possession of that object. Um, it's got several different examples. It shows you the wrong way and also the right way to write it. That's helping me out as well. Welcome back, whoever left and, and come back in. Welcome back. You had your dinner? Awesome. Welcome back. Unboxing. 
David, I will talk her ear off. I don't want y'all to fall asleep now. I want this to be inspiring so to inspire me more. But yeah, this is, um, these are great things and tips that helps writers. If you're not actually a writer, it probably is boring to you. But I think it's interesting because I want to prove my English talking, the way I speak, and improve my corrections and my grammar. I get past those two steps. That will help me come a long way. <clears throat> and that's just where I stop that. That's the furthest I got in my notes. Most of my notes. Well, really, actually, on seven on there. But I can stop there on that part. Because I don't want to make anybody go to sleep. But I just wanted to share a part of my unboxing mail package which i got all my things yesterday and thanks to david white and his brother wayne which you know is nameless t-shirt custom screen printing name they're the ones that's helping me and i thank you all give y'all thumbs up for it this is a great book i like it so far i'm learning a lot as i said taking notes i'm, I'm writing my own example sentences and trying to fill it in and see see which ones I get correct or what I've learned so far. And which ones do I miss and need to go back and study. That's the way I do it. I write my own sentence or I get someone else to write them out. And I go from there. Or you can look them up online and find extra questions. that gives you an idea of what questions you want to write about. And you all know, I always say, believe in yourself. I like journals like that with quotes on it. Every time I look at it, I get a down spiral moment. It's trying to creep up on me. I go back and look at that and say, oh, heck no. I still believe in myself even though I make errors and make mistakes. We all do. We're not meant to be put on this earth to be perfect. Or therefore, there would never be no mistakes to correct. You have to fall or have a weakness somewhere in your life. Some, some point, there's a weakness there. And we should all help each other grow to fix it, to learn from our weaknesses. So now we're going to discussions. We went through that, and I hope y'all enjoyed it. Didn't fall asleep too long. Now we're gonna have some just some fun discussions on getting to know each other, getting to more knowing each other, and seeing what what all we click with. You like the way I talked on that? It is really helping. Some of the things I named out, I memorize it. You remember me telling y'all on certain um, English college, book, college books a while back, a few years ago, I tried to do studying in it and got lost. And I'd study it, and I couldn't remember it. I can remember stuff that I read and took notes of in this book about the noun, the pronouns, he, she, it, we, they, you, and I. A verb explains action. You can use a noun and a verb, either or, as long as it fits the right meaning in the correction of that sentence. I'm learning a lot so far. I just started it on last night. And then right now, I stopped that I'm actually on page 19. I'm on the part where it says, why does English have so many different propositions? Boy, do they do. Do they have them? What is their function in a sentence? Things like that. That's where I stopped at. I love this book. I love all books. I'm just, in general, a bookworm. Whether it's educational, for pleasure, I love them all. Southern Belle is me, can't you tell? Watch this to say. I went to KFC last night. You know what I got me? I got me one of those barbecue sandwiches. The salad part was the extra, so I left it off, even though I love my salads. I got that with some mashed potatoes and green beans. Green beans is one of my favorite vegetables. Chicken is one of my favorite meat and fish. I love it, and I love steak. Can't get enough steak. What is y'all's favorite foods? 
I'm sure you all got a favorite type of food out there. Out there. You love my voice. <clears throat> Some people tells me my voice needs to be more. All right, let me see. What word is that? Like when you've been a speaker, you got to have, of course, you got to have proper English and all that to ever be a, a, a live speaker. And it was some kind of term they use. I use a lot of slang words, if you noticed it. And I got to work on my slang words. I use that a lot. I like the way I talk, too. I just got to get my stuff correct because I confuse people. I confuse them sometimes. But that's where partly my blind moments come in. I have days like that. Y'all y'all witness it if you have it. And my ears turn red, but they're normal today. They're normal. So I don't get picked on about my ears because they're normal today. My camera's not being bright for some reason. See if I could work on Y'all don't try to get too drunk or dizzy here. It kind of like goes dark and then bright. Maybe it's my light up there. Let me cut my light off and see if that helps. Hold on one minute here. Focus. Focus. I'm getting better, but it still kind of goes out, gets bright, and it goes in. That's my webcam. I'm not even using my um, camera on my laptop. Since I got that, I've used my webcam. Until I get enough money up and get to one of the other features where I can do more things with it. Like my thumbnails and add more extra content instead of just one live stream. I can better put more into one video. I know you don't need to know how to talk. You could talk somebody zero. It's helping me. This is about me and other people that's in the same boat I'm in. With the punctuation, the grammar, the good right speaking of English. That's why I got these books to help me and others. If I discuss it or which what I thought was a good good topic to talk about. And I like to inspire. You all know I love to inspire. If you come on with a frown, you're gonna walk off of here. When you leave here, you're gonna have a smile on your face. It might be witnessing seeing my, my dingy moments of my um 399 blind moments. Something's going to make you smile before you leave. And if it ain't me, my friends and my supporters on here will get you that way. Either way, you're going to have a smile on your face before you leave. So, what is some favorite foods that you all like? We can have a discussion on that. It's making me hungry talking about it. My, my appetite is weird. Sometimes I'm hungry, like around 11 or 12, and some days I won't eat till like 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. My appetite varies. But I'm glad everyone has showed up. I'm glad y'all are participating. It's getting better. It's still not full on the live chat yet, but... Maybe it's because they still got to get to know me. You have to ask me questions in order to get to know anything about me. Or if you watch um, enough of my channels, then you will know a little bit about me through my channels. Oh, I'm being my beautiful self. Oh, I haven't checked it yet. Because you sent me a message asking when was if I'm going to be live or be on any today. And I'm like, yeah, I'm working on it now. I told you, Wayne, that I was studying and getting my stuff together. But I'll check it after the live stream. I certainly will. Homemade pizza is your favorite. What is your favorite, um, David? And who did I miss on here? I see Ford watching the unboxing review. What is your favorite foods? Thank you very much. I love shout outs and videos. Hmm. 
But no, I didn't check the email yet. But I will soon. Homemade pizza. Y'all both had the same um, taste in foods then. Who makes the best homemade pizza? You, David, or Wayne? If you was to do a contest and y'all had to both make a homemade pizza, who would you think would win? Your brother's homemade pizza. Deck on it, y'all making me hungry now. What do y'all put on your pizza? Do you make like your own sauce? Do you grow your own garden, put your own fresh vegetables and stuff on it? We ate a pizza the other day, but it wasn't homemade. I, mean, I haven't had no homemade pizza in years. I got to try some of that. My freaking charger wants to come undone. It's been silly today. It makes sure this thing's plugged in. It jumps out once in a while. My brother Wayne, my brother Wayne would win. Awesome. Awesome. So what are some things that you're good at, David, that your brother can't win? Or is it mostly a tie? What's some things that you're good at that he's not so good at that you win with? I like to ask questions and get answers. Y'all can ask me questions too. I'll try to give you the answer. If I don't know it, I'll look at it. I mean, even though I have all these errors and sometimes questions or weaknesses, I can still answer some questions if y'all have any. I named a few of my favorite foods. His meat lover's pizza is the best. Oh, wow. He makes meat lover's pizza. Do y'all put mushrooms on it? I love mushrooms on my pizza. I know bacon ain't good for you. I like bacon on it, but it ain't good for you. Or have the, the right veg, veg, veggies on it, like the onions and Lots of pepperoni. I just love pepperoni. I can't get enough of that. What is my favorite movie? Is it one or can it be more than one favorite movie? I can say I have three favorites. One would be The Notebook. And the author, he written the books by Nicholas Sparks. He's also my favorite author. The Notebook, Dirty Dancing, and... Steel McNolas with Dolly Parton and Julie Roberts in it. Those are my three favorite books. I got so many, but I have certain newer favorite authors. And Kim Chance is my newer favorite author. She wrote The Keeper, and now Seeker's about to be out. You have to read The Keeper before you read Seeker. Hitting in the baseball game. So you beat him in the baseball game? Awesome. What is your favorite um, movie unboxing? Review, what is yours? You forgot the bacon. I love bacon, even though it's bad for you. But I don't eat it every day like I was when I was little. We was raised on it. We'd have it breakfast. We'd have it with our um, BLT sub sandwiches. We ate it a lot growing up when I was young. Y'all forgot the bacon. You love the notebook. You seen it? Or Message in a Bottle, or um, Still McNolis, which one did you love? And you should get the books. I read the books before I actually buy the movie. I got the original book, the first edition, and then the one based off the movie also, and the movie to it. Mine's Avengers. Oh, that's pretty good. I like all the Marvels. Credible Hulk and Wonder Woman is one of my favorite um heroes the hook wonder woman spider-man superman but i like the hook i just think he just it's neat how he has to just to get angry in order to change and who he is now he's strong he's bulky he makes us look like little piss ants compared to him <laughs> i like the hook a lot but i watched avengers too and my daughter says they got a new one out it's still at the movies so I'm just going to wait till it comes out 
and watch it when it comes on Hulu or my Netflix. Pepperoni, ham, bacon, sausages. Oh my goodness, I bet it is good. You're making my stomach growl. I <laughs> know you can't send that through the mail. You can't send me no food. <laughs> I'd love to try that homemade pizza. That'd be good. That's awesome there. What else is your favorites? Do you make like a uh, homemade like a uh, pot roast or things like that? I make a good homemade pot roast. I love it. I like pot roast. I like steak. And I love my salads. Salad's not a salad. You ain't got some type of meat in it. My boyfriend's son gets some. He's like, you know, Technically, that salad ain't doing you no good. I said, why? He said, because you're putting all that fat on it. Eating that ranch dress dressing. You realize how many calories it is? I'm like, since when you've been a health nut expert? <laughs> but I have to have some kind of dressing on those too dry. Uh, oh, no, you didn't, David. Uh-oh. Yeah, he did. He forgot the bacon. <laughs> he said <laughs> Or is he talking about the baseball game? He beats you against that. These two brothers are a trip. They love picking on each other. Y'all get to know them pretty well. They are awesome. Y'all don't see my ear red, do you? It looks normal. I like that. One night, I'm going to get steak and eat it. Oh, my goodness. Southern Belle. Yes, I'm a Southern Belle. I have an accent. They didn't call me Southern Belle for nothing. <laughs> I'm from the South. I'm from Lancaster, South Carolina. I can straddle the South Carolina, South Carolina line, and the North Carolina line. How about them apples? I certainly can. I might even just do a thumbnail out there one day. When I get my other camera, that's in the works. When I get that, I'm going to do a thumbnail and show and tell that I can straddle the South Carolina and the North Carolina line because I'm right there on the edge of the North Carolina line. I love steak. I like steak with mushrooms sauteed in a certain sauce with mushrooms on it. Few little pieces of bell pepper, uh, bell pepper. You can put it on a kebab stick. Oh, that's some good stuff. And cook some um, corn on a cob. That's some good eating. Green beans. Some people like cornbread, but I like either Texas garlic toast or homemade biscuits with that meal. Homemade tater salads, homemade slaw. I love my homemade slaw. I make the best homemade southern slaw out there. Everybody loves my slaw. He pitches in the game and I hit the game. <laughs> I pitch the game and I get no hitters. Oh, practice makes purpose. You got to practice. Practice makes perfect, not purpose. Blah. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> You'll get better with it, Wayne. I got some faith in you. Do y'all have faith in me? I got faith in you. Southern Belle is me. So I don't sound too weird going live to y'all. Whoever left, welcome. Come back. I'm glad you came. Come back. You pitch the game and you get no hitters. <laughs> oh, bless your heart. Blind moments, even when I get tongue-tied. Let me see if I could just turn it a little bit. It might help the lighting. Can y'all see me clear now? Does it look fuzzy? See pieces of my hair sticking out. Is that curling iron kind of made it frizzy a little bit yesterday? I've been trying to brush it out. I think I'm going to stick to my new curling iron. Because I never used that one I showed y'all yesterday on live stream. I don't put no hairspray. A lot of people make a habit. And they want to spray their hair. 
when they curl it, don't do that because it fries your hair. I didn't put anything on it. It still kind of made it little. It's got some of the curls in it, not much. But make it made it a little freezy a little bit. But you'll have that on occasion. You'll have that, shouty. You sound awesome with your voice. Are y'all just saying that? Are y'all just saying that? <laughs> I'm being silly again. Here it comes. The natural me is coming out. Oh, well. Yeah, but it's got static in it. From that stupid curling iron, it's supposed to be like spiral. But when I cut my hair, it's not quite as long enough. So I don't get all the pieces. It wraps like that all the way up. And I don't leave it on in a few seconds. But my other curling iron don't do that. It just looks natural and shiny. And it sucks your hair up in like a blow dryer. And it'll beep when it's done. If it beeps too soon, that means you didn't either put enough of hair in it or you didn't do it right. It lets you know. And somebody's like, don't get this color now. And I tell people, read the instructions. It tells you how to use those in Infinity Pro color now. Just read your instructions. It comes with instructions. And I have no problems with mine. Mine's never got stuck where I had to yank it out or cut it out. They tell you to unplug it and release, and it should just loose, um, it release your hair. And if you got it on, and it gets sucked up in there good, then you're going to have problems. You got to power it off, cut it off, and it will release it. So a lot of people have, have problems with that. You got to follow directions, people. If you don't ever read and don't follow directions, you're going to be a blind like me. But I read, and sometimes I don't understand what I read. And I have to go read it like three times more. After three times, I should get it, get to the point. Really? I should get the point. Welcome back, whoever just come in. Hello, how's your Thursday coming along? We're just sitting around getting to know each other. I then went through the basics of, on Dr. Grammar's right from wrongs. On the proper way of trying to learn to speak correct English and putting, using the right words to stories and putting the putting the punctuation, grammar, and so forth. Yeah, don't get too caught up in the moment. Don't get caught up in the moment. <laughs> or to write a song. Don't get too caught up in the moment. I think I got some ideas for that. I might write that later on today. Don't get too caught up in the moment. Or you'll lose yourself. You'll get confused and get everybody else confused right along with you or with you. <laughs> Thank you. Should I name my name Southern Bell instead of just Lisa on my channel? Change it and put the Southern Bell. That really might throw people off to subscribe to me. 293 no hitters in the baseball game. No Southern Belle, you talk nice. That is Southern Belle because I'm from the South. I am Southern Belle. And I'm so proud of it. Shouty. Mm -hmm. I like my Southern Bear. Southern Bear, there we go. <laughs> Southern Belle voice. See if my ears turn red. Uh oh. Spoke too soon. It's got a little reddish pink, pinkish going on there. Now it's hidden. Thank you very much. I'm glad you like the way I talk. Sometimes I had to rehearse before I ever got into this live stream stuff. I had to go back and constantly replay it, rehearse. Ooh, my voice sounded scratchy on that one. Go back. I probably did like four or five uploads before I figured out and got to hang it what it was like to um or get popular what it's like to try out going live which i'm still not popular not trying to be popular i want to grow i want to eventually get in some kind of marketing learn enough things with my writing that i can get into marketing as writers there's so much things you could do that's what they're crushing it marketing entrepreneurs 
They're, sh they're showing tales, something they're selling. A lot of people like to go to people's live stream to hear about marketing, um, how they started, where they got from today, and things like that. Oh, I just told you it was getting a little bit of pink, but now it died back down. See? There's your answer. This book is very confusing. I think I'm, I'm starting to read it on my computer because some of the print is small. So I read it on my MacBook. And there is a lot of stuff I need to learn in here, dude. Uh, I thought about in the past was going to take and go to college for web designing. That's challenging too. My brother-in-law is done went to school for that. So he might can help me get it set up because I'm totally lost with this stuff. I'm not going to lie, Wayne. I am lost. I went and opened that book. I said, what in the world? This should be named the Draw Plus X4 for Sexy Blonde for Dummies. User's Guide. That should, should be what it's tied. I looked at this thing. It's like, whoa, boy. That's so much stuff. I got to break it down in sections. And where I stopped that was on page four, as far as I got. You know, getting familiar with the book, with the software, learning about the different techniques of the software, the layers, um, the cropping and all that, viewing the quality, learning a little bit about that. And the rest of it, I'm kind of on pause right now. But I do like it. Maybe I'll get help from my brother-in-law when he gets time to help me. He can help me at least get it set up, and then I can go from there. But I love all my packages to go review, to give updates. I got it yesterday from David and from the um, Nameless T-shirt, customized screen printing. And I want to give a shout-out and thank you all again. Anything you send me that's got to do with writing or educational, you can send them my way because it's helping me learn. And I just love it. I love it. And they will be in my library forever. Until I pass away and I'm dead and gone. Then it'll go to my children. Unless y'all want them back. <laughs> but my kids, I mean, Lexus writes stories here and there. Sarah's not into writing. She likes to read the little episode things that they do. The little stories is an app you can get. Android or for the Apple or iPhones and it tells little stories episodes. That's what she likes to read. She don't read anything that's this thick like that. <laughs> I have to because before the internet come back come out, we had to stick to books and go to libraries and look them up and had to use the internet for the library years ago. I'm still old school. I use both the internet and books. So, and that's how you learn. In order to educate yourself to be better, to gain more knowledge, you got to stick in with books as well. That's educational, not just for pleasure. I'm guilty of both. I'm guilty of both. I did some pleasure reading on Monday and Tuesday and part of the weekend. And um, I had a great weekend. It rained a little bit Saturday morning, and then it was just clouds off and on the sun. And now they're calling for more rain again this weekend. Will I ever get my yard finished? I can't when it's raining. We got a lot of trees cut cut down and um, trees cut into wood. In case people need some firewood, they're short on their property wood. We, we're trying to stock up on wood on the side. We sell wood and stuff like that as well. As we do in scrapping with copper and certain metals, we save our soda cans. You scrap them. It's just little projects we do just to get that extra boost or extra cash. It ain't a lot, but every little bit helps. How was y'all's red ears coming along? I'm sure y'all get start blushing. 
or your red ear starts glowing. How's y'all's red ears coming about? It's a shame I can't see them. Hint. <laughs> How's y'all's red ears coming along? Didn't have my cups of coffee, but I got behind. I only had one cup this morning. Now I'm drinking my tea. Cheers to you all. I had to have my tea with me. And I'll be right back. Be right with you. Anybody comes in, make sure they hit the like button. Y'all try to keep their interest. Keep them in. Make jokes if you have to. Y'all good for that. Keep them in for me. Be right with you. Right with you, with you, with you. Y'all don't fall asleep on me there. Don't fall asleep. Be right with you all.
I ain't back. Had to adjust my fan and stuff. Whoever come in, welcome to my live stream. Hello, Summit. How you doing today? Hi. I'm back. I don't know how long you've been on, but I'm glad you showed up. How you doing today? How's your channel coming along? I hope you're having a great day as I'm having a great day. We got to talking about food earlier, people's favorite foods. And it got me hungry. It was talking about pizza. Homemade pizza. Is that your favorite food? What's some of your favorite foods? Let me see if I get it right. You from India, right? Make sure I get my get that right. Where y'all from? You you're the one that's from India, correct? Drinking your green tea. Nothing wrong with that. I know it ain't like my tea. I still love my tea. My tea's still good. So you're doing good on your channel? What is your favorite food, Summit? Indian food or different? What is y'all's food like? Is it like Korean food or something? Y'all eat a lot of rice and... uh like uh, stir fries and stuff like that. Oh, wow. I bet it is different from Americans' food. Chickens, meat, fish, we eat that. How's that different? I eat fish, I eat steak, I eat chicken. Barbecue, which I'm cutting that on because it's pork. I love pepperoni. I love salads. I eat them all the time. Steak and fish and chicken is my three favorite meats. The cooking style is different. Um, how different is it? How do you cook your, your, your meats? How do you cook it? You broil it. You bake it. You uh, fry it. You saute it up. Yummy. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> I get it probably is different. Well, hello, Wayne. Welcome back. Definitely, I'm Southern Belle. That's for daggone sure. <laughs> Some people get offended by uh, being called a Southern Belle. I'm eating a hot pocket. We started talking about homemade pizza, which it ain't nothing compared to homemade stuff, but I'm eating a hot pocket. I like to heat mine up in the oven. The oven's better for you. Sometimes I still use a microwave, but they're not really good for you. All the radiation in them. Um, I'm eating a hot pocket. They're yummy. Full of three or four different cheeses in it. Oh, oh boy, it's followed out. <laughs> My cheese is followed out. What's your issue, Jasper? You done ate this morning, boy. And you'll eat again in a, in a little while. He smells my food and he's whining for it. So Dave and Wayne, what have y'all ate today so far? Did y'all eat some homemade pizza? You're working on a blinking banner. Awesome. Lucky you, Jasper. Shh. That's enough, boy. I'm 
You working on a blinking banner. Lucky you. You're still working ideas in your next video. That's awesome, Unboxing. Good luck to you on it. When you get it set up, just let me know. Make sure those who subscribe me, make sure y'all click that bell so y'all don't miss miss when I go live or other my videos. That's really important. A lot of people don't think about that bell. But that bell helps draw your viewers and audiences in and stuff. Have you come up with any ideas on your video yet? Is it inspiring? Is it something about games or what is your niche? What is your niche that you're working up to? Your brand. I get excited when I hear people talk about working on their channels. And they create and they're creator and they're constantly creating ideas. That's how you grow and learn. On a small parcel. It takes time. It takes a couple hours sometimes. You have one of them fancy cameras that everybody uses with a tripod with it. I got my tripod, but I ain't got the camera yet. I'm working on that. I'm not gonna buy it brand new when I can get them used. And they can work just as good. <clears throat> just using iPhone 6. Let me ask you a question. Now, I have an Apple computer. I, I like to ask questions to you all just like I want you all to ask me questions. I have a, um, a Mac OS High Series 2010. It still, it still updates, been refurbished. The price would have been $250, but they sold it to me for $150 because we had to drive out of our way and we was having vehicle problems that same day. And I, I got it back in October of this year. Um, I'm fixing to get an iPhone, if I said it right, 5S. All these X's and X, they confuse me, the difference between them. It's sort of just like this phone, Friday. This is my partner's. It's white, but a different case. Will I be able to do good thumbnails and more upload videos with these type of phones than an Android? Because on my Marola Turbo 2, the battery's messing up. It's getting bad. I'm about to place a battery in it. So I, ain't, I, ain't, I haven't been able to do really too too much of work with thumbnails lately. Nah, just using the iPhone 6, which is rubbish. Rubbish? What's that mean? Rubbish. I'm not familiar with that word. What is no good? You think the, the, the Turbo Marola 2 does better? Because I heard the Apple products are better than the Androids. I've been working with Androids for years, though. But I'm getting familiarized with my computer, my Apple computer, but the phone's a little bit different. The way they got the, all the apps and how to set it up and all that stuff. So I was just wondering, would I better still um, make good, create good things and good thumbnails? This is a phone I've had over a year. It's a Motorola Turbo 2. It's got a good camera, nice camera effects on it, but it's just I got to replace the battery eventually in it. Oh, I do. My video is on my iPhone 6, but I do not edit on a phone. I don't blame me. Some people don't edit on their phones. It, it takes too long to, to edit and publish it, and it also drains and wears out to tear on your battery is what I was told. Do you have a computer? Do you have a MacBook computer? When you do uploads, it's still going to publish where people can see it. Do you have a computer? I use PC software. Oh, so you have a Windows 10 and you use uh, PC software. Oh, wow. I'm learning about this 
software I just got. Still studying it. It's used for Windows 7, which I've been reading up, and everybody's telling me the Windows 7's outdated. They no longer do updates, and I don't know if that's true or not. I could have read the wrong outdated something on the page about it, but I, I was told that Windows 7 no longer uh, updates. It's the Windows 8 and Windows 10. So I'm trying to learn between the products. I've used Windows all my life too. It's not been but a few years I've been getting kind of acquaintance and learning about the Apple laptops. It took you two years? Wow, but I bet you're still a fast learner though. Look how far you've come. See, I want my thumbnail and logo and text to be about writing or setting up a writer's blog with it or something like that. And I know you can use different text, different colors with it. I'm still reading the guide. I'm reading it actually on my computer because the book I still got the book and I'm keeping it. It's just the text is a little bit small. So I read it on the computer. I just got mine yesterday. So you still struggle with some things. Maybe um um David's brother Wayne can help you with that. I mean I know every software is different, but he has uh He's tried it and used it, and maybe he can give you some ideas if you're struggling with that. But I know every software is different. It's not the same. The Nameless T-shirt custom screen printing, maybe he can help you with that. And can you tell me why you don't edit with your phone? Does it take too much memory? Does it slow your phone down? A lot of people edit on the bigger Apple phones. What, what, what's, what's that called? iPhone X is what people get into now. Wayne and David, you too quiet over there. What y'all doing? Are y'all getting your butts kicked playing the game? <laughs> Them two are trip. They trip me out. You know, whatever you learning, maybe you can give me tips on it. Mine's a little different software. But my friend says it will work for what I need to do on my channel. I just made a banner with your name on the t-shirts. Eating lunch. What you eating, bestie? With my name on the t-shirts? Also, awesome. Too long and also iPhone X is probably much better for editing. Is that the bigger ones? The iPhone X? They're like $800, aren't they? For them phones. Wow. Your niece is good with it. Does she have a YouTube channel? Because I need some tips. You need to send her my way. I was told with the Apple phone by this, I know it ain't the most updated one, but I never had an Apple phone for. I told because I was told because it's so small that it takes a lot to upload. It took two hours one day just to upload to upload to mine a video. So, oh my goodness, I got to plug this up. It's going to kill my battery. And look, I had enough juice just to finish that one. But that other one, oh my goodness. It was like an hour and 30 minutes. I think she has AM, not really sure. She has AM. You mean like our time zone's different? 
Oh, she comes on earlier in the mornings when she does it. It takes too long, and also the iPhone X is probably much better for editing. Okay. Y'all enjoy y'all's lunch, bestie. But, you know, like, it just had to update. There's two-factor authentication. Protect your Apple ID, iCloud data with an extra layer of security, blah, blah, blah. It had to do updates on it. And my partner's trying to get it activated through Total Wireless. We bought this plan. For three of us, it would be $100 or 85 bucks for three lines. And ours worked, but his didn't. And it it was um it was on the other phone, not this one. He tried to get it on this one too, but they said because it was hooked up through Verizon, or it's actually an Apple phone. His other phone was a Marola. It was the next thing that was upgraded to mine before the the Motorola three come out. And it said because he was through Verizon, trying to say his phone was locked when it was it. Is this phone right here? It's a Verizon Droid, and it's the next thing. I think this is a Droid, too. And they said it was locked, and because it was through Verizon, they couldn't put the um the plan on it. They're, they're working connected through Verizon Total Wireless. So he told them after that that they wasn't going to get no more business. He was kind of upset. Then he tried to get it on this phone. And some reason, I don't think it's reddish in the, uh, it's some kind of RPN or CRN settings. I don't think he's got that properly correct or something, but he, he's having trouble getting minutes on both of these phones. I appreciate it. You what, what, what are you doing, David? Enjoying your lunch? What you eating? What you eating? She used to have a channel. Oh, I got you. Just let me know when you find out about that. Most of the time I use my, um, I do live streams, but sometimes when people don't come in, people say to still put it up there, but see, it don't count against your watch time credits. When you're going live and people are in here, that helps build your um, watch time credits. A sub all. I bet it's good. I'm eating a hot pocket. I'm about done with it, but I'm still eating my hot pocket. Because y'all started talking about pizza, and that's about the closest thing right now I got. Are you in college unboxing? Are you taking any college courses or anything? What's wrong, Jasper? I know a lot of people say they're growing, they're um, crushing their thumbnails just by using their phone. Because some things on the computer you can't do that you can't on your phone. And some things on your phone you can't do that you can do on your computer. It varies. You got kicked out. I'm talking about college. You're not in college? Or did you get kicked out of college? You done with your sub? I'm about done with mine, too. I think we all got here and started talking about favorite foods that made us all hungry. Hey, right, just regular school. I got you. I graduated and went through all my 12 years. I tried to start the Rye University in Charlotte taking computer information system. I couldn't pass the math part. The math just really just threw me. I couldn't learn it. They didn't really have the 
steps or the right instructions to break it down. They expect you just to figure it out in a in a code or a formula type way. And I didn't know nothing about that. You got anxiety. Well, you can't be around crowds of people. It makes you nervous. You get anxiety in testing. I got a little bit of anxiety when taking a test. My oldest daughter, I only have two. The 21-year-old has anxiety problems. She can't be around big crowds. And um, I've been researching, trying to um, understand it so I can try to help her cope with it. The best things I learned to do when anxiety creeps up, you just have to breathe because a lot of times it makes your breathing get off track and that causes the panicking. You just have to practice breathing it out and do things that you love doing. If it's taking a walk, going for a jog, if it's writing down, why am I having this anxiety? Or what's causing this anxiety attack at the moment? Once you come down off it, you write about what you was feeling. Sometimes that helps you control it. Used to, I could talk about all sorts of types of foods and fruit, but now I get hungry when I start talking about food now. But a lot of people, I got a lot of friends and family members on my mother's side that battles anxiety. They say using the CBD oil, it fights certain cancers, shrinks certain tumors, it helps anxiety, ADHD. The CBD oil that helps heal your body. Sometimes that's something good to get started on. That helps release anxieties. If y'all get that where you're from. Because I mean, a lot of people, they got different illness. Some deals with schizophrenia. Some deals with just um, bipolar depression. Some has, um, like you say, anxiety. And we just have to find our ways to cope and work around it and find what works naturally. Yeah, it does. It sure does. That's why I ate a hot pocket earlier. And now I'm full. Usually I can eat two of them, but I'm full now. So how do you actually deal with your um, anxiety unbox and how do you deal with it? Do you write anything down about it? Do you do things that you just love doing and it gets your mind off of it when the anxiety happens or how do you handle it? Do you have anxieties, David, or your brother? Do y'all have any anxiety problems that y'all deal with? Yep, my oldest daughter goes with goes through that, and it's not fun. I would say YouTube takes my mind off of it. Good deal. By you creating things and coming up with ideas, it gets your mind off of it. That's another good way. Uh, meeting new faces on YouTube, and everybody's like, you finding people that's friendly, that helps you grow. As a YouTube family, that's a good way. I think that's an excellent way. Mine, I, mean, I have a little bit as far as testing. Well, if I'm around too much crowds, I can't go to malls like I used to um, because of the crowds. Escalators, I don't get on them because when I was eight years old, I'll tell the story about it. My hair was real long all the way past my hips. It got stuck into the elevator, literally. It was trying to grind myself up in that thing. I had to get all of my hair cut. Only happened once. I never got on them since then. I have an anxiety of that. You take medicine. You is CBD oil not legal where y'all at? You could try the CBD oil. It's natural. It helps heal inside your body. 
There's no TH. I mean, of course, everybody's got some THC in our bodies, but not that type that much. It helps your body, helps you heal with um, um, anxiety, inflammation in your joints. It heals tumors, cataracts. It helps with bipolar, ADD, ADHD, all those things. My daughter doesn't take anything for it. But she seems to think it's starting to get worse, like when she's by herself sometimes. And she goes through it. You're looking over your song books. How many song books do you have total? Are they already put in the book and printed out or just written? And you made it into a book, David. <clears throat> I hope y'all hear me okay. Y'all hear me clearly? Am I breaking up or do I look fuzzy in the camera? You all let me know. I think maybe y'all's internet might be lagging some. Yeah, you're looking over your song books. I got that. Are they already printed out and published or just written in regular handwriting or typed up into a book? How's your book made? You're fine on my phone. No, no lags, nothing. Awesome. Oh, wow. How many years ago? You know you're going to have to make, make me a copy. Print it out and make me a scrapbook and a copy and put some of your songs in it for me. You know I'm going to have to have a book of that. Yeah, I know that's going to take some time putting together, but I'm patient. Sometimes I get excited and get a little bit impatient, but I'm patient most of the time. That's great, David. That's awesome. So you have completed some goals. You actually completed a song book. Several of them, I guess. As you said, selling books, that's more than once. So that means you've um, written several of them. That is great. Do you write songs, some? Have you ever tried to write music? Or even write a book? They're handwritten. Awesome. That's even better. It's got your natural handwriting on it. Awesome. Has your brother ever, or is Wayne still on? Wayne, have you ever put songs together in a book? Have you ever done that? And y'all swap them out or read each other's music? Critique with each other as brothers? A whole book shift of them. Wow. What's the title of one of them? Your Desires and Writing Songs or... You have a certain topic. Each one of them is different, I'm assuming, your um, title. My turtle's being lazy today. What you hiding up there for? Y'all need to wake up, Daisy and Gizmo. You should say, say hello to the YouTube family on here. Their personal use. Oh, so y'all don't publish them. Y'all just keep them personal for yourselves. There's nothing wrong with that. But you know what? I guarantee you y'all song books and make a sale. Y'all make a killing off of it. Because that's talent right there. What a night with you. Oh, that's pretty. I like that title. I need to get me another journal so I can just keep all of my songs together in that one book just for that. Um, cause I used up most of my other journals I had. I give Alexis my red one. That was on my nature's, my book of observing certain animals, birds, butterflies, hummingbirds is my favorite bird. I love hummingbirds. I love collecting different wind chimes. I had them all out in my yard. Some on my house I have two little ones inside. It's just so pretty. I love the sound, the light sound. The big ones makes too much sound. I like the little ones better. But 
My partner has the big ones. I want to take your hand. That's a nice one. I like what a night with you. That's pretty too. I want to take your hand. I want to com comfort you in the time of need. That's a good title, ain't it? Or be your comfort. Be your comfort as a friend in time in time of need. Is that a good title? To start off with a to you know of a song and putting it into a book. Backstage rock and roll. Awesome. So you got a great deal, good bit of them then. Is it just in a regular notebook spirals? Or do y'all actually um, use software and you make your own book cover and put them in that? Some people make their own book cover. The name of you, my YouTube channel is make sure it's word for word and exactly correct. Hold on just a second. And I'll tell you, shout it. I don't even know if y'all short or not. I just use that phrase, shouty. <laughs> like the song says, shouty girl on these loves, title of the song. But I'm not singing it because I'm not getting a strike from it. It is called. Just a second, because sometimes my internet lags a little bit. It's showing I'm going live now with the grammar and language. Awesome. It's showing trending where I'm live, but. Like I said, if people don't hit the like bell, they miss out on it. But they view it usually when it uploads. Um, this is awesome. It's called Lisa Pittman. That's just the name of I should have put writers now, but somehow I let that out. And can't figure out how to put that like up under my name where my picture's at. But it's supposed to have Lisa Writers, W R T E R apostrophe S space now. But the name and channel is Lisa Pittman. So it should have Writers now on there, but it don't have it. I don't know how come it, that's got left off of there. But that's the name of it, Lisa Pittman. Down by the ocean. Awesome. But I want writers now on there. What I'm trying to figure out is how I go back and put that in there. Where it's under my name and my profile profile picture. And it's on my tags and some of my um, live stream uploads. I talked about it. But I got to figure out how to put that under there. Yeah, I definitely like and subscribe. Even hit the notification bell. Thank you. I'm just making sure because... When I'm going live, that helps you find me as I'm going live. I made a blinking banner name called Lisa's Writers Now. That's what it's supposed to be. That's what my channel, my blog, and all that represents. But for some reason, I noticed it don't have Writers Now under my name. How do I put that back under my channel? Or it's already set and they won't let me do it. Somebody told me once you create it and set it up, sometimes you can't change it. I don't know. I like that. With my pink colors, thank you. I'd appreciate that. I appreciate that, Wayne. That'll work. It should have actually have Lisa writers now and put the possibly. Um, before the R and S a writer, it should be Lisa without the S writers with the posse S now. But if that sounds even better, more professional, leave it that way. You can only change just your name because it should say Lisa Pittman, Lisa Pittman writers now. Or writer, yeah, Lisa Pittman's writers now. But I just noticed, I just now noticed all this time I've been having a channel, just now noticed it wasn't on there. So I got to try to fix that somehow. But the question is, how do you go back and fix it? Do you have to go under your settings? 
where it says to edit it on there to change it because I need to fix that so I can put Lisa Pittman writers now correct can I do that and change that or meaning just to what I got this says Lisa Pittman that is my nickname my real name is Melissa Carol Pittman Funderburg. They didn't change my marriage name off, so technically I guess I'm still a Funderburg. F-U-N-D-E-R-B-R-K, but I go by Lisa Pittman. Because Lisa was always my nickname. That's what I like growing up. So if I can change that, maybe some people won't get confused. Most everybody knows my passion's writing, being a writer. But there's other things on there too. On my mobile or computer, I can go into settings. Oh, okay. I went on there and I got all confused on the computer part. Maybe it's easier on my phone once it gets charged up more. So you're a big help. A uh, big help. <laughs> there I go messing up. Blah. You are a big help giving me tips as well. And I appreciate all the tips y'all helping me with. If you don't know, you ask. I'm not going to say I know something when I don't. Then they're like, well, tell me what you know about this product or that. They're going to catch you in a lie. If I don't know, I don't know. That's why I ask. I'm all, I'm all eager about learning, getting more knowledge, more wisdom, and putting it into use. Because that's the only way I'm going to grow or, or be a creator. I'm a creator of things, but I get stuck as well. Like on my thumb now that YouTube's unchanged around, um, it gives you more uh, extra boxes where you can put more description in there. But before, it says, oh, it's too short or too long. You have to get it in so many characters in your description before you go live. And now they change it up. And I don't know if y'all heard, I watched on Roberto or Rob, how you say his name? I think it's Roberto Blake. He does all about social media and giving updates of changing and things are changing. He told me um, it was on an upload saying the Instagram is going to do away with all the likes on there. That they think to get more enhancement, people need to do more commenting, do more uploads, more um, stories or something like that. They're going to do away with the likes on there. Have y'all heard about that? That's going to make Instagram drop because a lot of people don't comment. They just view you and they just throw in the hearts if they like what you had to say. I got a lot of enhancement on likes and views, but not enough comments on there. And that's what most of the platforms, they want to see how much engagement you get from people commenting on your channel or your stories. So I wonder if y'all heard about that. Cause I need to look more into that. It's going to make Instagram a lot of people going to do away with it because they like the features with the likes and stuff on there. That's most of their enhancement. They're not getting comments and they're going to do away with the likes. Then what's it going to be? Just views that they're going to go by? Just like they did away with used to, you can go live stream on your mobile. The Article 13 did away with it. You can do uploads. And like now I'm on my computer going live, unless you reach their their guideline with YouTube, you reach over a thousand subscribers, then you can do it. And they can give you that extra super chat thing, but you got to complete their goals and their guidelines to reach that far. I thought that was kind of confusing on that one there. I know you don't know, David. The unboxing reviews give me tips on that. It says I can go up under my settings and um and just change my name. It's still going to be Lisa Pittman, but see, I want to add writers now to it. My name still stays. I just want to add the writers now under it. So... 
I know Wayne's doing me a t-shirt and doing samples of it because that's what his business is about. And you need to go check out his channel if you have it already. And if you want a certain shirt made or designed, just let him know and he'll hook you up. I can do that. Okay, that's what I'm asking. Thank you. Thank you, Unboxing. That's what I need to know because I'm still keeping Lisa Pittman on there. But I want to put underneath it, writers with apostrophe S space now. So I'm going to go change that. I want everybody to get confused. I just realized I didn't know that was under there all this time. It's on my tags when I um get ready to edit it and publish my videos up. It's under my tags. Thank you very much. And if anything I can help you with, with anxieties, um, a lot of people are on medication, but I'm trying to go organic way and try to stay away from medication if I can, because that medication can do something good, but then there's other side effects that don't do good for you. So it's kind of like a mixture in between. It does good for something in your body or, or about you and something else that don't do good. So I try to go the organic or natural way. The only time I take medicine is a leave. If I get migraines, I'll take two leaves. Anything else, I don't take nothing. I just let my body do its course. Now, or unless I'm running a fever. Sometimes I don't take medication that. I'll just bundle up in blankets and I'll sweat my fever out. That is a natural way to get all that pollutant it and colds and germs and and toxic out of your body. You can also sweat them out. That's the natural way. I want my channel name. Because I'm going to go back and change. It's still going to be Lisa Pittman. Lisa Pittman. Writers. With apostrophe S. W-R-I-T-E-R. Apostrophe S. Space. Now. N-O-W. Now. That's what I want to be called. Did you get that, Wayne? Let me type it and see if that'll help you. Just like this. I showed it in the red. Why does it do that? Sometimes when I think I'm getting spammed on somebody's live stream, It'll pull up my name like it's highlighted, and then they have a check mark. Sometimes it has a heavy mark, a faded mark. I know the blue one lets people know that, that you got them, that you subscribed them, stuff like that. Oh, I made an error. Let me, let me do that again. It's the, oh, I did it right. Lisa Pittman writers now. Did you get that? Because the pasta's got to go between the R and S. Because there's more than one thing with writing I'm doing. If it's Lisa Pittman's writer now, it's like a singular. I'm doing only one creative topic or idea, and I do multiple different things with my channel. So that's why I have the writers with the possibly S now on it, if that makes sense. Don't that sound good? And I want to be able to put a logo or like a little text with, with my shirt made with it. But I know the shirt can't be on there, but like with the saying on it, if that'll help. Yeah, when you go into to change your name, just edit the name, what you want. I've done that before. Okay, that'll work. I appreciate all these tips from you. You just don't know that. How much I've learned just today. I really appreciate that. It's amazing. The stuff you learn, the things you got trouble with, things I got trouble with, we can learn all together. I love this. This is how we grow. We get acquaintance, get comfortable with each other, and ask questions, and we learn off each other what we can learn. I've learned a lot from David and Wayne. Still got a lot to learn, but I'm learning, and I like that.
Hello, Franco Lena. Welcome to my channel. How's it going on your Thursday? I hope you've had a great week and you're inspiring and smiling and enjoying your day. Did you not see it? You got to do it like this. Lisa Pittman. Oh, you subscribe me. Thank you. I will subscribe you as soon as I'm done here. Lisa Pittman. I'm trying to put up another thing under my channel for some reason i didn't notice it was left off and i'm trying to figure out how to go back and add that on there and this channel was about the dr grammar's rights and wrongs learning how to speak proper english language and learning your punctuation grammars and that kind of thing that was earlier so if you missed that you can always review it back later now we're just chatting getting to know one another and getting tips and asking questions. Thank you very much. I will make sure I subscribe you too. I hope it doesn't kick me off my live stream if I click these dots and do it, but I think it's going to take me off to another channel. I hope it don't because I want to try to add you while I'm still live and I don't know if it's going to let me do that. Nope, it just says add moderator, hide user on this channel. No, I don't want to do that. So I have to wait until I get done with my live stream to do this, I believe. Uh, but I will add you. I got you. And what is your channel about, Franco, Lena? If you're still here. And you just might have to get to know me more. That is awesome. Y'all are just great. I love seeing the love and support. I guess she left or he left. <clears throat> is that a guy? Franco? I think that's a guy. He done left. I think they subscribed you, Nameless. And unboxing. Y'all got to subscribe. Let me make sure I subscribe to you some. Hang on a minute. Did you get that? What I wrote in the live feed, Wayne? How's wanting to write written? Oh, you're still here. Okay, I want to make sure because it's only showing three watching work. Before it was five. Now it's three. Thank you all for hitting that like button. Keep on hitting that like button when you come in. I greatly appreciate it. Let me go subscribe to some of y'all real quickly. Because I tried it and it won't let me do it as I'm going live stream. But I can open another tab and go that way. As long as there's not too many tabs open. Where are you from? Wait a minute, I think Franco left. I was about to ask him where he's from. I think he left. Want to know where everybody's from on here. Any of y'all close where I'm at? I'm in Lancaster, South Carolina. I can straddle between on the South Carolina line and the North Carolina line. How about that? A lot of people's like, no, you can't for real. I'm like, yeah, and it trips people out. Um, let me type in your name. And I'm going to add y'all or subscribe y'all. New subscriber, Immortal Warrior 99. Thank you. You know who you are. Give a shout out for those who subscribe. I'm getting a little bit more subscribers. Awesome. Wasn't expecting it, but thank you very much. I don't see your channel, Summit. What's your brand name channel? Is it called Private Out Now? Private Jet? Is that what it's called? I'm trying to figure out what your channel is so I can add you. But it's pulling up the, the, the trending zone here. I got my package today, Lisa. What package did you get? Oh, unbox and review. Maybe I typed the name wrong. 
Let me see Summit's name again. I could have wrote it wrong. That's awesome. What did you get in your package today? If you still hear Summit, say hello. I'm hoping you ain't left quite yet. Um, you're from the UK. Awesome. I've never been there. What's the weather like in UK? Yes, that's correct, Wayne. Lisa Pittman, space, W-R-I-T-E-R, -R, apostrophe S now. That's correct. Raining in a minute. It's supposed to rain our, our end this weekend. It's clouds and a little bit of sun my, my way, my end. In my neck of the woods. Um, I don't know when you walk out, it don't show it. It should still show who all's been on here. I'm trying to find Summit, how, her, her, how the ID is written. And I don't see it at the moment. Maybe I just need to keep going up. Oh, there it is. S-U-M-I-T. Maybe I've written it wrong. But I'm still here. I'm trying to add some of these subscribers right, right quick. I'm trying to say many has got the same name. Is it called Summit 007? You got 413 subscribers. Or Summit Rainer. The Crazy Summit. I don't know which one is his. Um, oh, that must be it. You're the you, you, YouTuber subscriber. It's got a blue page on it. Hello, guys. I'm Summit. I'm a new YouTuber. So please subscribe my my summit. I just subscribed to it. I hope it's the right one because there are different ones on here. Now I'm going to see who else in case if I didn't subscribe that I was supposed to. Um, and I'm going to make sure I get you in here. And. I want to make sure that I'm being fair like y'all are being fair, you know. Uh, I haven't found found yours yet. Uh, it just says Lego Unboxing Review Channel. Ten subscribe. How many subscribers you got unboxing? What is your channel name? I'm trying to figure out if I subscribed you or not. I've subscribed so many, and I'm not sure if I got you subscribed. Do I have you subscribed, Unboxing? Um, oh, I did subscribe back to you. I want to make sure I did because I couldn't find your channel for some odd reason. Okay, Wayne, send me that sample to my email. That'll be fine. Hurry back. I just want to say thank you for subscribing back to me. You're welcome if I did. I want to make sure that I did. Um, Because I don't want to say I did if I didn't. That goes for everyone. Much love. Thank you. And we send our love to you as well. And I appreciate y'all being on here. It's been at 104 p.m. I'm sure I know some of y'all got some things y'all got to do. You got creative, uh, being a creator in your channel and work and stuff you have to do. And so do I. And you all know, in case you don't know, on Fridays, I do story time. I'm either reading out of um, The Keeper. 
or Wink and Poppy Midnight. Last week, we was getting caught up on Wink and Poppy Midnight. Y'all can decide if you want me to still carry on out of this book story or out of the book Keeper. It's by Kim Chance. She's my newest favorite author. And I'm telling you, those two books I can't seem to put down. They're great. Hello, Fed Bam. Hello, how are you doing? Welcome to my channel. I just want to say I hope you had a great week. You're having a great Thursday. That you're continuing um, um, continue your goals, you're setting notes, and you're, you're growing on your channel. And we're here. We done done the first brand, which was on Dr. Grammar's Rights from Wrong. Learning the proper way of English and the proper way of putting your punctuation and grammar and that kind of thing. We did discussions on it. And now it's just discussions on getting to know one another. Hurry back. So tomorrow you want to do the story on Keeper. Okay, we'll do Keeper tomorrow. That'll be lined up for Friday. On Fridays, I do story time. How you doing? Um, PhD, B-A-N-M. And where are you from? I'm from Lancaster, South Carolina. I'm in the United States. And it's just amazing how we work together. Oh, okay, because I was like, I had to go all over from my from my wrist to my elbow to try to find it. But I will check that just shortly. Thank you for the update. Thank you, Unboxing, for that. I greatly appreciate on everything y'all have done. Y'all have been such a supporter, such an inspiration for me. And when I need tips, y'all are there and not afraid to share them. And I greatly appreciate it. It means a lot to me. It means the world to me. So where are you from, um, PhD? Are you still here? Bantam, or is that just a random hello? And then they left. Hurry back. Make sure you all hit the like button when you come in. Even if it is for a peek, hit that like button, please. Go in studio. Creators. And then go to the community. I appreciate all the help y'all done. So, and I will show you in case some of y'all ain't never seen Keeper or been in my channel and know what the heck I'm talking about. Show and tell. I've had this book a over a month or two months. It's called The Keeper. And the author is, so I don't get no credit. I'm not going to get copyright warnings because this is not my book I wrote. I bought it. I'm a great fan and a mentor of hers. It's by Kim Chance. It's called The Keeper. And the theme of it is magic always leaves a mark. I love that. Very great binding, good picture, quality. And what it's about is a 200-year-old witch attacks her 16-year-old bookworm, Lainey Styles. She is my favorite character, Lainey, in the, in the book. Is determined to find a logical explanation. Even with the impossible, staring her in the face. This is just a review of what we're going to be reading tomorrow and discussing. Laney refuses to believe it until she finds a photograph linking the witch to her dead mother. It's a young um, adult, adult, but I think older people can read it. Um, in the U.S., it's 
When I bought it, I got it for eleven forty nine. It's a great book. You need to read this before you order The Seeker. It's by the same author, Kim Chance, C-H-A-N-C-E. Great. Awesome story. I didn't get a little bit, but I got it marked where I'm at, but I'm already past to um, chapter. This is my pleasure reading, but give me ideas for my characters, my structure. Seeing how the punctuation is done in form of this book. It's different things that I read pleasure for. I just love reading. I'm on chapter four, but we stopped that on chapter um, on three. And I think we're on page. Yeah, we're on page three. We're going to begin on page three tomorrow. But I'm already on chapter four just a chapter ahead of everybody, but I mark it for where I left off so I don't lose my place and everybody don't get confused. Well, wait a minute. We need to go back a little step. So we go back a little step so people can catch it. And if you miss the other chapters, just go follow it where you see me reading story time that's got Keeper on it and you can catch it. That's another way to catch up on some of my story times. And just last, last Friday, I was doing... Um, Story time with uh, Wink, Poppy, and Midnight, and then we've done discussions and reviews about it. Seeing who all really paid attention and who has it. Sometimes I ask questions, I'll throw a question there. Who is your favorite character? You have to figure out out of the characters who your favorite character is. Mine is Laney. Laney, she's a bootworm, Laney Styles. She's always magical. Always wanting to learn things as much as she can possibly learn. I just love her character. She's awesome. All righty. I appreciate you, you guys for all the tips. Even though my channel might not mean a hill of beans what you're looking for. I hope you got something out of my channel. You see that I'm inspiring. I'm friendly, I'm truthful, I'm consistent. I at least do one or two, sometimes three every day. So far this week, I've done a live stream every day this week. And I hope you all check them out. Those that has missed them, those that has been supportive and been on to the end, I give you thumbs up. You know who you are. Thank you very much and I hope you all have a blessed Thursday. If it's reading you enjoy doing for pleasure, education, get back to it. If it's being a creator of a gamer, stick to it. If it's being a writer like me and writing and want to learn and, and, and complete and fix all your error mistakes in the writer's life world, stick to it. You all have a great Thursday. Let's get back to that reading. And then when you subscribe me, make sure you click on that bell so you don't miss other videos to come. And if you like this live stream video, feel free to hit the like button. And comment below if it's nothing but a nice hello. Thanks again, all. David and Wayne, y'all have a great Thursday. Y'all can leave me messages, you know. You can leave me notification, personal messages on my YouTube or email, either one. And y'all have the great rest of the afternoon. Bye now.